Okay, uh, Tyler Glale asks, can allocator of blah 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 be flattened out into multiple distinct function calls for each allocator mode at compile time? Yes, it could. I didn't really experiment with that, but um, you could do this, for example. Uh, you could say, where is my um, pool allocator is in this function, right? You could, in theory, uh, use this auto bake operator that I demoed last time, right? And put that in front of the mode. Um, and then supply defaults for all these other things. So then that would give you two things. The auto bake would compile out all these other if conditions, right? So that you would have a faster allocator function. Um, you know, in theory, if the optimizing compiler does its job, then if you call with mode allocate, right, all this other stuff would go away and this if would go away and your body would be only that. So that would be cool um, and it would be faster. Uh, and then the other thing you would get is just not having to specify all the arguments, but I think alloc kind of takes care of that, right? Because remember, you just say alloc size or whatever and the other arguments get filled in. So, um, but you could make convenience functions on top of this, or you could give all these default values and only pass the values that you care about. So someone's saying some concerns about third-party libraries accepting your set allocators to behave in certain ways, libraries crashing because of quirks of your allocator, bad behaving libraries changing your global context. Okay. Um, right now, you can change the context uh, because we don't, you know, we sort of pass it by reference around because you don't want to pay for copying the context, the context actual data. So right now, if somebody modifies it, um, they can hose you. But my plan is probably to make it immutable, right? So you can't take a mutable address to anything in the context and you can't modify the context, right? Um, you could only make a new context and set that, right? So that would prevent any uh, lower level library from hosing you. Um, and when it comes to quirks of your allocator, I mean, I think you should just write a good allocator. Like, I'm not sure, like if you write an allocator that's flaky and weird, then of course somebody's gonna crash if they use it. You write a good robust allocator uh, that people can call alloc without having to worry about it and see what happens. Uh, okay, other other questions. Uh, pseudonym73 says, I can easily see context management getting unwieldy when you use a bunch of libraries, all of which have a different idea about context. Plus there's things like callbacks and passing jobs to thread pools. Um, well, I think if you pass a job to a thread pool, you would give it the context, right? Like whatever your job data is would contain the context that you want that job data to run in. So I don't feel like that's a problem. Um, however, we have to see in practice like what people actually want to do and if there is a problem and how to solve it if so. But I don't feel like that's a problem. Um, libraries having a different idea about context, I don't I don't know what that means because context is defined globally. Like that's that's in preload, which is like right now you don't get to have an opinion about what this is. This, this is just global, right? Um, we may, uh, a more uh, functionally versatile version of this might allow you to dynamically add members at the end. And we, we probably will explore that idea at least. I don't know if we'll implement it. We have to see how it would be used. Um, what you saw today was sort of the most basic version of this, the easiest to understand and the fastest uh, to run version of this, right? If you can start adding any function to the end of the context, then you sort of have to dynamically search through there, which takes a little more time, whereas this is a very fast dereference. But yeah, we'll see. Um, someone asks, can you assign a thread just a logging context and not an allocator context? Yes. In fact, I did that. Um, 
right? I left the allocator null in that case, in which which meant it went to the system allocator, right? Um, you could in, inherit, quote unquote, a different allocator by copying it and then only overwrite the logger. Yes, that's totally a thing you can do. Is there an easy way to get the logger to get the line number function file module a log originated from? Not yet. That's got to happen. Um, so I can't really do a good job of assert in this language yet because I don't have macros. And you know, in in C, the macros are where the file and line come from. So I don't have an equivalent of file and line at the calling site yet. Something like that will happen, and I just don't know exactly how it's going to happen, and it's been a lower priority feature than this other stuff, but I do finding, find myself wanting it once in a while and wishing that I had it. Someone says thread context and the main context are confusing to both have the same name. What makes you think thread contexts are different? They're the same struct. So if, if you go into thread, right, um, it's got this context, and it's the same struct as the main one. Unless you mean, like, you use thread context as a general term in computing. Maybe that's a pr like if like the word context is kind of a general word, and so maybe this gets called something else ultimately than context. I don't know. Yeah, that that's a legitimate thing. Like, what's a good name for this if if context is too generic? I don't know. Is the new print function doing anything super cool and unique? Well, it's kind of cool. Um, I didn't officially demo it ever, but there are some live streams where I programmed it all up. Uh, so there's six hours of live streams, and the cooler stuff is sort of the last two hours, and you can find those on YouTube. Will there be compiler flags to automatically call defer after all set allocators? I don't think so. I think defer of releasing an allocator is something you want to do manually and not invisibly magically. You don't want it too many things to happen invisibly and magically. Uh, at the same time, you want the programmer to do a minimal amount of work, but you don't want to lose sight of what your program's doing, right? And that's a thing that I think happens in C++, and I don't want to go too far down that road. Um, you mean like the OS level thread context, context switching? Okay, yeah, I mean, if you feel like the word context is too overloaded, you could maybe call this something else. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it evolves. Um, does the print function still work on embedded platforms? Um, what would happen is, we don't have if defs yet. What would happen on embedded platforms is you'd have an if def inside the print code that doesn't try to print out things that need type data. So it would be able to print integers and floats and all that stuff, but when it came to structs, it wouldn't be able to print the fields. When it came to procedures, you know, you wouldn't be able to say the types of the arguments or anything. That's fine. Um, you just get a less functional version of print, but most of the convenient things about it would still work, like the syntax of the format string and all that would still work. All right, I'm going to go out and have fun tonight. Thank you, everybody, for coming along. Um, it's been a good time. It may be a while uh, before I do another stream on the compiler, because again, I'm focusing on witness stuff. That's what I said last time and then proceeded to do compiler stuff. But I feel like now, a lot of the big questions are answered to get to version one of the language. There's still a couple big things that have to be done. Like I need to do, uh, I need to do polymorphic data structures. There's some questions there, but they're not huge. Um, I need to do the other big way of metaprogramming, and there's some questions there. But I have a, a vague idea about that in my head how it's going to go. So. Um, I feel like this is an okay point for me to like let this simmer for a while and go back and like fully focus on witness stuff. So thank you everybody. It may be a little bit before the next official demo, but we'll see. You never know. You got to follow the inspiration. So goodbye everybody.